So we've been talking about different types of marriages and actually the different strength. Uh, different I have difficulty hearing you. So we've been talking about different types of marriages and effectively the different strengths of different kinds of marriage contracts. And we've said that if two people who are both of sound mind yes. and are both over the age of majority contract a marriage in the usual way, so for example, giving a ring and accepting a ring, then the rabbis say effectively that's deriter. It's a biblical strength marriage. And that's fine. The rabbis learn it out from the biblical verses. So the reason it's biblical is because the rabbis say so. But okay, from the point of view of halacha, it's a biblical marriage. And if we have other kinds of situations, so maybe someone who wasn't didn't have full mental capacity, the rabbis still allow them to get married, but that marriage has a different status. And as the 14th chapter of Yuvamot begins, we're going to carry on our pattern, which is defining the boundaries of marriage, just as much as we're defining the boundaries of Yibum, of Leverett marriage. And we're going to see how these issues play out in terms of marriage and divorce. And we'll see, by the way, that we touch on an incredibly sensitive and difficult issue, namely whether what type of consent is required for a divorce. And the Mishnah begins, Cheresh, Shenasafi Kachat. So a deaf man, this is someone who is considered by the rabbis not to have full mental capacity, right? Cheresh Shenasafi Kachat. So a deaf man married a woman who had full capacity. So he doesn't have capacity, but she does. Pikachat is someone who has full who full capacity, someone whose eyes are open. So someone who's she's not someone whose eyes are are open. Yeah, just she's not deaf. She's not deaf. Exactly. She can see what she's doing. Or for that matter, someone of sound sense, a man of sound senses who married someone who was deaf. So he can divorce her or he can retain her. So even though... What does the, Im Ratza Yotzi mean? If he wanted to, he could, Yotzi, he could send her away, he could divorce her. The Im Ratza Yekayem, if he wanted to, he could keep her. And the Mishnah explains this, Kashem Shehu Kones be remiza just as he marries by gestures so he might be he might be someone who's deaf right he, he might be he might be someone who's deaf he can't talk the, the Mishnah assumes that someone who is deaf can't talk properly so he's married her with gestures he hasn't actually used the words hareya because he can't he can't explain those but the Mishnah says, "Kashem shu kones bi remiza, kahu motzi bi remiza." In the same way, he can divorce her by gestures. In other words, some kind of communication is adequate, and we're saying effectively that even though this marriage seems to be of the the, the marriage is it, it's not a fully Torah. Um, it, the, the marriage doesn't have full Torah status because it's not, this is not a marriage between two people, both of whom had full mental and legal capacity, but it can still be, it can still be um, dissolved by someone who doesn't have full mental or legal capacity. And let's just see the Mishnah carry on playing this out. Aval, this word aval, by the way, but I put it in brackets because it's sitting there in, the Kaufman manuscript, but it doesn't really make sense. And it's not there in the printed text, but let, let's just, let's go with the flow. Let's go with the Kaufman for the moment. Aval. A man of sound senses married a woman of sound senses. So they both have full capacity. So this now is kind of a 100% Torah um, conforming marriage. They're married according to all opinions, not just to rabbinic convention. So they get married. And she became deaf. So she loses capacity. So when they went into the marriage, she had full capacity, but now she's lost it. But however, the halacha, the halacha is going to be the same. He can still divorce her or he can retain her if he wants to. 
And that is because he has mental capacity. She became deaf, but he has. And we're going to see as this halacha plays out in the Mishnah that his consent is required for the divorce. So he requires mental capacity, but she does not. She does not. She, she, a normal tzi olamit. So let's let's carry on. So let's let's let let's carry on for a second. We'll we'll answer that question. Let's keep going. Nishtat ta lo yotzi. If she went mad, he may not divorce her. This is a protection for. This is actually the protection for someone who went insane. So it's nothing to do with her losing mental capacity. Legally, he could. But from the point of view of her own protection, the rabbis made a takana that he cannot divorce her if she became insane. The rabbis are concerned about harm that might, that might befall her. Now, let's keep going. Neat harash who? Let's say that he lost his mental capacity. Or nishtata. Maybe he became insane. A no motsi olamit. He may never divorce her. If he became deaf or insane, he may never divorce her. A no motsi olamit. He can absolutely never divorce her. And now, kind of, you see the assumption of the Mishnah beginning to bite. He's lost his mental capacity. Now, when he married his wife, they both had full capacity. So they've taken on a marriage, which, if you like, is full strength. It's 100 percent derita. It's there's nothing. Nothing can break it except a full strength divorce. And yet he's lost his mental capacity. So he cannot give a full strength divorce. And so the Mishnah rules. A no motzi or meat. He can never, ever divorce her. And now Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri is gonna is he's going to um he's gonna object or he's gonna query this anyway. Amar Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri vechini v'nei maha isha she nit racha she nit har sha yotzi. How is it that a a woman who became deaf can be divorced? They are ish she nit harash a no motzi. A man who becomes deaf cannot divorce. So a woman somehow can be divorced without full mental capacity, but a man cannot do this. And they answered him. They 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 answered him. Amrulo, lo domeha ish lo domeha ish hamagaresh la isha hamit garashet. You cannot compare a man who divorces to a woman who is divorced. She ha isha yotzebi sona because. The woman goes out with her consent. A woman can be divorced with or without her consent. A man can only divorce with his consent. So in other words, the halacha is asymmetric. And it's very interesting that the Shulchan Aruch, at least in the Ramah, is going to overturn this halacha. So this Ramah, this halacha is brought down by the Rambam in the Mishneh Torah, the and by the way, and, and, and by and by the way, in the Shulchan Aruch, it's brought down in the Shulchan Aruch as well. But as we get onto the Ramah, which is the Ashkenazi commentator on the Shulchan Aruch, and is essentially the halacha for all Ashkenazi communities, the Ramah is now going to quote the Takana of Rabbeinu Gershon. Now remember. The Rabbeinu Gershon made a number of really important takanot, which are very famous. One of them is that we don't do bigamy anymore. This is approximately a thousand years ago. We don't do bigamy. A, a second one was that it is forbidden to open up someone else's mail. You can't open someone's mail without their permission. And a third is that we, you can, a man cannot divorce a woman without her consent. And the, the takana of Rabbeinu Gershon is actually not doesn't it's not evidenced in any primary source that I could find. I could not find this written out, and I guess this was verbally transmitted. But it's actually carried in the commentary of the Ramah on the Shulchan Aruch, and so I brought it to you from here. And the Shulchan Aruch says, "Yahol legar shabulo data." He can divorce her without her knowledge. But the Ramah then comes along and says, and he says, by the way, the afidu ein lo l'shalemla. Uh, he can even divorce her if he doesn't have the money to pay her ketubah. She can't prevent it. She has to become divorced and then put in a civil claim. 
And then he goes on to say, This is the law. But Rabbeinu Gershom decreed that a man can't divorce a woman without her consent. Unless, unless she's committed specific sins, even law she'avral dat, unless she's committed, you know, specific problems which are uh, listed elsewhere in, in Siman 115 of the Shulchan Aruch, and we'll actually learn these when we get into the Mishnah of, Ketu, of, of Ketubot. In, it's about, I think, the eighth or ninth chapter of Ketubot. We'll come across these 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 one-off situations. But essentially, the halacha that Rabbeinu, that Rabbeinu Gershom decrees and that the Ramah brings in the Shulchan Aruch is that a woman cannot be divorced without her consent. And the Mishnah will then go on just to sort of enunciate this at more length. He'id Rabbi Yochanan ben Gududgada al hachareshet shehisia aviha. So Rabbi Yochanan ben Gudgada testified about a deaf mute whose father had given her in marriage. So she was actually... Um, married by her father with full mental capacity she's a deaf mute but she was clearly married off married off as a minor so her she has a full if you like full torah full torah um marriage and halacha in the mishnah is shehi yot she can be sent away with a bill of divorce i.e she can be divorced without her consent as we found in the Mishnah above, and the, the rabbis say, Amrulo seva. the other is similar to her, i.e. the case that we saw above in the Mishnah is similar to this one. It is similar to this one, but it's rejected by Rabbeinu Gershom and by the Halacha in the Shulchan Aruch.